Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Call the meeting to order. Mr. Lashley, I think you have the honors. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks, everyone, for being here tonight. If I can get you to join me in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you again for another glorious day that you have created. And dear Lord, give this board the wisdom and the strength to do the business for the citizens of Alamance County. And dear Lord, we know that all things are possible through you. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're moving the uh, presentations up, uh, but before we do that, if we can have an approval of the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Second. No. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Okay. Ms. Short, who do we have? Uh, how many do we have present for the proclamation for the Emer Emergency Medical Services Week? We were going to offer as an agenda adjustment, if the board would like, to have the proclamation for EMS Week to be moved up because we have a number of EMS staff here who are quite busy, as you might imagine. So if you would entertain that request, we'd love to do the proclamation first. I'll make a motion to that effect that we Thank move that you. item up to the beginning of the, of the agenda. Second. A motion second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Okay, and who do we, um, who's Raven going to be Raven. presenting this? I believe Ray Vipperman is here from EMS Somewhere. as our I'm director. I think we're getting him from uh, overflow. Uh, <laughs> Surprise, Ray. We, we <laughs> put you in overflow. <laughs> That's right. It's okay. I knew you were here. I went through the reception line downstairs. <laughs> Thank you. We're happy to have them tonight. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. So we brought a number of our folks tonight. <laughs> so we're asking you all to declare uh, next week EMS week. And I get up in front of you guys and I get in the spotlight. But at the end of the day, these are the folks that are out <laughs> saving the lives and doing the work. And so I wanted a chance for them to come up here and, and uh, be present before you all uh, as this proclamation is, is read. So if we can, uh, we need a motion for the proclamation. Motion to approve the proclamation. Mm, second. If motion is second, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. We better not have any emergencies right now. <laughs> <laughs> we really appreciate you guys. Um, board, would we all like to go down and, and stand with these fine people? Sure. Let's do yeah, that. If, if we have space. That's right. <laughs> we'll fill the front up. <laughs> but you guys are going to have to come up here. <laughs> you guys want to come up? We got it around. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
good job. Man. <laughs> we don't need an almost broken off. <laughs> well, that's true. I oh, was in good hands. Yeah, he tripped us a little. <laughs> You're fine. I wasn't going to move it back much. Just enough for us to get in here. Oh, it's your <laughs> the proclamation reads, and this proclamation is for Emergency Medical Services Week, May 21 through 27, 2023, whereas emergency medical services are a vital public service. And we all know that. Whereas the members of the emergency medical services teams are ready uh, to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury. And whereas emergency medical services have grown to fill the gap by providing important out-of-hospital care, including preventative medicine, follow-up care, and access to uh, telemedicine. And that's relatively new. How long would you say? Ten years? Yeah, yeah, it's less than that, but it's becoming more and more common. Excellent. Whereas the emergency medical services system consists of first responders, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, emergency medical dispatchers, firefighters, police officers, educators, administrators, city hospital nurses, emergency nurses, emergency physicians, trained members of the public, and other out-of-hospital medical care providers. And whereas the med members of the medical, med uh, ser medical services teams, and that's plural, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours as specialized training and continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills in their formal lives. And whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and the accomplishments of emergency medical services providers by designating Emergency Medical Services Week and now therefore be it resolved that we, the Alamance County Board of Commissioners, do hereby recognize the week of May 21 through 27, 2023, as Emergency Medical Services Week, and we encourage the community to observe this week with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities. This is the 15th day of May 2023. Ray Snickle always. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I am going to hand to you Thank the proclamation, you, which I assume you will share with everyone. Yes, sir. We thank you. You got some good shots in the back of your head. <laughs> 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 Is it Thursday? Yes, sir. At one, one to three, is that correct? Yes, sir. At the station down here on uh, Main, South Main, or Pine. Which one is it? Uh, East Crescent Square. East Crescent Square. Yes, sir. Thomas, do you not want a picture? No, I think you guys have it covered. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, our next session are the public comments. And uh, as you can see from my sheet, there aren't any comments. Well, maybe there are. <laughs> there could be a number. Uh, you're limited to three minutes each. They are timed. Uh, and I'll apologize in advance because if you go over three minutes, they'll have to gavel you to a stop. So, uh, Yeah, the first one is marked out. Is that is there a reason for that? Okay, uh, Butch McKenzie. Good evening. Hello, sir. My name is Butch McKenzie. I live off of Fawcett Lane. Um, I'm here about the RAD gun range and the new ordinance that you're thinking about voting on uh, after the next meeting. Um, it seems to me that you're just interested in bullets that intentionally leave the gun range and it seems like um, all bullets that leave the gun range should be an issue. It seems like if you would go by the rules of the North Carolina Wildlife Commission, which says no rules, I mean, it says that no bullet should leave a gun range and their rules have no alcohol and things like that, those would be good rules to abide by. To have an ordinance that says you get fined $100 if your bullets intentionally leave the gun range, well, I think my life's worth more than $100. I don't know about some of the other people, but that just seems weird to me. Dwayne Allred was putting up his deer stand, and bullets go by him on Sunday, March the 5th. I don't think those were intentional bullets. I think that was unintentional. When the deputy uh, Mel Gay, uh, Garwright, when she responded to a call on Tally's property, had eight bullets go by her, they were unintentional. But yet, what is a $100 fine going to do for someone intentionally shooting off the gun range? It, makes, it just makes no sense. Um, the, the bullets that leave the gun range are, are unintentional as far as I'm concerned, always. I don't think they're trying to shoot other people's houses. I don't think they're trying to shoot other people's trees. I don't think they're trying to shoot other people. It's just the fact that this gun range is on 24 acres and they're trying to shoot high-powered rifles that are very loud and they disturb our neighborhood. I've been listening to gunfire since 9.15 this morning and it's really getting old. This has been going on for two years. This gun range is two years now, and we have been fighting it since the first bullet was fired. And it seems like nothing has been done. And it just seems like if you've gone over those um, ordinances that other counties did with setback rules, decibel readings, and things like that, we'd all be a lot better off in our neighborhood, and we wouldn't be having to fight this nightmare like we have been. Um, and I appreciate it if you would go over those rules and, and see you know, what other counties do and try to protect the neighborhood. The, the, the ordinance should be about protecting the citizens and not protecting the gun range. You know, to, to say that they can shoot off the gun range unintentionally is just, I just don't understand that at all. But I appreciate it and that's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Henry Vines. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Henry Vines. I live at uh, 3450 Isley Drive, Snow Camp. I uh, just wanted to do, talk a little bit tonight about uh, the proposed budget that, that y'all going to present tonight. Um, I know this is a trying time for everybody, and um, just wanted to bring a little information to the board. I, you know, I sit on the Board of Equalization, and the one of the biggest concerns of citizens that come before us is the fact that their taxes are going to go up you know they're just so uh, adamant about how much their taxes are going to go up because their property values have increased so greatly and I do appreciate what y'all are doing about trying to work toward revenue neutral and whole revenue neutral and I applaud you for doing that but as you've all seen in the news and everything our municipalities are not as uh, forthgoing uh, 21 cent more in Burlington to 43 cent is 64 cent is that's one cent below where we at right now uh, even higher than what their tax rate would be uh, so 
Graham at 20, Elon at 14. I mean, above revenue neutral is what was reported. Now, I don't know what they're going to do or anything, but all we got to go by is what's in the Alamance News, and we thank you for, for what they do. <laughs> but uh, that is one of the biggest concerns that's coming down. And, you know, last year y'all asked us as citizens to pony up almost 10% increase in the budget. I hope that y'all ain't going to do that uh, to us again this year. The budget increased by 10% last year. Am I, if I'm wrong, I think I'm right. But, uh, And I hope that y'all are not going to increase our budget by that much again this year. Um, I think Mr. Lashley has said um, that uh, we should stay at an uh, inflationary rate of about 6%, and I think that would be something that we could work with. I think there's enough money floating around in our uh, county that, you know, certainly we wouldn't have to have no uh, increase in taxes. We had $5.5 million left over last year that hadn't been used. We got another probably 5 and a half that ain't going to be used this year. That's $11 million right there. That's... That's almost a 6% increase over the budget from last year. Um, the reval it figured at um, 43, 7, 43 and 3 quarters would net about $2.6 million on top of that. Uh, if you've done away with the 8 cent and just uh, realized the 3 cent gain that would come back to the county, that's $7.8 million. That's almost 17 over $18 million of money just floating around. And I do appreciate the time, and I hope that you will consider keeping this down as low as you can. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Mr. Morgan. Good to see you again. Good evening. Uh, my name is Peter Morgan. I'm a resident of this fair city, and I'm here because I'm concerned about something I read in the Alamance News on the 27th of April. Um, and that's, that's the headline there, which I'm going to leave you a copy, if I may. Um, $25 million in repairs spending requests outlined by school officials. Now, the list goes on. There's a, a total of $81.7 million. These include the thing I just mentioned, and 56.6 million in future expansion and repairs. There's also a proposal by the city of Burlington to spend 3.6 million on AstroTurf. As a taxpayer, I wonder why such large surprises keep happening. Um, is it possible our, our tax dollars could be better spent? Um, you are the top management of an enterprise with over 7,000 employees. You serve almost 200,000 people. And I think you're doing a great job, <laughs> at least uh, you're trying to keep our taxes down. Um, the services include the Alamance Burlington School System, the Alamance Community College, Parks and Recreation, Law Enforcement, Courts, Social Services, Public Health, Veterans Services, and much more. Um, that kind of organization is known as a conglomerate. It's notoriously hard to manage such a thing. There's a lack of syn synergy. Why are conglomerates more uh, difficult to manage? Since these services have very little in common, you hire managers with relevant training and experience to run them. When things go wrong, such managers tend to manipulate the information that's fed to management, uh, to their superiors. Since they're experts, their hubris tells them that they're the only people who can fix the problem. <laughs> and um, instinctively, they hide information about problems until they become nasty surprises or even disasters. There's a way to make your job much easier and save a little mo money in the process. I, since I don't expect you to listen to people with funny accents like me, <laughs> <laughs> I hope you'll be interested in the ideas of the person who found a way to manage conglom the really gigantic conglomerate, uh, the ITT Corporation. And he then wrote a book about it. The person is Harold S. Janine. Thanks to him, there's a fine auditorium at Duke University in the Fuqua Business School. And uh, I'll give you a little photograph of that in the write-up. Um, following the example of Commissioner Turner and the Greeks, i.e. Uh, 
I come bearing grip gifts. Here are two copies of his book. And spoiler alert, the book explains the philosophy of no surprises. And it's not just a how-to book, it also explains why. Anyway, I hope I wouldn't, I wouldn't make it a four two this time. <laughs> 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 We thank you. Rudy, and I'm not going to attempt to pronounce your last name. <laughs> Cartassi. Uh, my name is Rudy Cartassi. I live at 207 East Dealer Street, Mabin, North Carolina. I'm the owner of Rad Industries and Rad Range. Um, just quickly, uh, Rad Range has spent roughly as it's caused for our berm upgrades. And this is just giving off the top of my head uh, 15, let's call about $35,000 on our high powered rifle range as of today's date, which we started uh, construction on last month. Anticipating finishing that in the next uh, three weeks. Uh, that's why we have heavy equipment out there. I don't think anyone clearly understands the scale of what we're talking. We have moved currently over 5,333 cubic yards of dirt. The berm height, uh, the new range roughly starts out at 25 feet and then extends down to 41 feet of earth that we have cut out so far. We are shooting at a 20 degree down angle. We have built the back of that berm up another 25 feet. So it is a six and a half story building surrounded on all four sides. I don't know what more we can do as far as safety. We have RSOs out there. I have pretty much heard it's all about the noise. Um, I have agreed with the sheriff not to shoot on Sunday, so after 12, I have RSOs. If you want to know the cost, it is a lot of money that our members pay us out there, um, as well as the toll on my health as well from all the aggravation and frustration. And again, it's all about the noise, the noise, the noise. And yes, we opened up at 9 o'clock today, and there was gunfire there while I walked into work at 9.05. We are a small business. We pay taxes. 2% um, of every sale we make comes right back to this county. I don't want, I, I have everything in place. We have insurance. I've done everything in my power at this point. I don't have anything to just hand out like I normally do. Uh, I'm just tired at this point. I don't know what more I can do. It's just, whatever you guys do, we'll, we'll bye bye. Uh, it's just to a point now where my doctor told me either take a vacation or more meds. As a small business owner, I'm telling you, it's, it's rough. You know, you're getting attacked on every front. I don't think truly anyone understands the cost. Insurance, taxes. Burns, responsibility. Walk in my shoes for five minutes on a day. I get up at about 5, 45, 6 o'clock, I'll go to bed to one or two. Seven days a week because of this, for the last 12 weeks. Win, lose, or draw, I'm taking vacation day tomorrow because uh, I can't do it. Thanks. Thank you. Richard Clark. My name is Richard Clark, and uh, I own two properties that are adjacent, closer than anybody else's. Uh, I have a one house that's uh, 150 feet from the border of uh, the range, 
and uh, another commercial property that's down the far end of the range and uh, so I'm I'm as close as anybody to the actual uh, source of noise and uh, if it, yeah it's on okay uh, <clears throat> and uh, I can say several things uh, number one I uh, I don't see why uh, somebody shouldn't have the freedom to have a range if as long as they uh, you know it's a right we have in America to have guns if we are law-abiding and it's uh, it's uh, it's our right to have a range if we really want to have a lot of guns I, I, what can I say and uh, the thing about the noise problem uh, yeah you can hear it but it's not a it's not a health issue you can take my word on that if you go on the internet you can buy a book that's about this thick called the sound engineers handbook and I'm listed in the first chapter as one of the 100 most influential people in the history of audio with some really famous people and uh, I can tell you I, I think if that remains a question I think the county should hire an expert besides me because I'm biased uh, to go out there and take sensible measurements skilled with proper equipment and determine whether or not there's really a hearing thing because uh, there's not and uh, so I, you know it's one man's right to have a range and it's a it's what he wants to do and it's a legal lawful business and so who are we to take it away from him so there you go you didn't say where you live you don't live thank you sir Mr. Clark, thank I you. A, I, have a, I have a business there and a house. Okay, we do not allow. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Clark. Ann Jones. <laughs> thank you all for um, being so gracious and let us come up here and speak our mind. Um, my name is Ann Jones. I live on 605 Washington Street in Graham. And I'm here just to talk a little bit about the budget. I'll be very, very brief. But I know that you're um, voting on the Capital Reserve Funds, $25 million. Um, and I would like to see that money spent in our school system opposed to just um, building up the jail system uh, I would like to see more competitive wages for teachers and um, better facilities for our children because they really are our future here and they could be sitting where you are in the future if we invest in them and I think it's an important investment and I would just like to ask you guys to just consider that for our school system for our children for my grandchildren my i've lived in alamance county all my life and i'm proud to be part of alamance county i'm not planning on going anywhere my kids went to the schools and graduated from these schools and my grandchildren will probably graduate from these schools so i'm just asking you to please consider instead of just putting all those funds into um, building up a jail system to actually give those ch kids a chance and build their education and their future. Thank you so much. And we thank you. Amanda, is it Perry or Penny? Perry, P-E-R-R-Y. Thank you. Thank you. Your R's and N's <laughs> look, look close. <laughs> I write quick, I apologize. I'm sorry, my name is Amanda Perry. I live on Gilbreth Street in Graham. Thank you all for giving us the opportunity to speak today. Um, I'm here today to speak on the misguided proposal of removing school funds from the ABSS Capital Reserve and diverting it into the development and expansion of county buildings. Personally, it saddens me to have a county commission that's at odds with our school board, um, especially when it's the children that suffer. Uh, seeking accountability for where these funds are spent is admirable, but not when it's used as a bludgeoning tool and then a reason to defund our public institutions. Um, it's disgraceful and counterintuitive to creating safe and equitable environments for our children to learn. Uh, according to recent data, your constituents consider education to be the number one priority, even above public safety. 
Um, ABSS capital plan documents cite $25 million of unfunded projects for fiscal year 2024. Parents across North Carolina are now being put into a situation where we have to fight for our public school funds. Um, from state legislatures pushing school choice vouchers that will defund our public schools in this district and county commissioners like yourselves threatening to remove millions of needed dollars for repairs to our district schools under the guise of accountability. NC just passed permitless carry and you guys are discussing draining the fund that would ensure the schools of this district have functional locking doors. Make it make sense. If you're so concerned about where this money is going, why not work with the school board in their capital improvement plan to ensure that these repairs are made in a timely manner? I'll end with this because I don't want to spend much more time up here. Um, a wise Gibsonville alderman once told me, if you show me a city's budget, I'll show you its priorities. And right now what you're showing Alamance County is that your priority and your expectation for our children is that they're going to be frequenting that J.B. Allen courthouse more than they're going to be going to class. We've got to do better. Fund our schools. Thank you. Thank you. That's the last public speaker. Let me remind everyone that the county commissioners at the end of the meeting can address some of these issues, but we're not allowed to do so during the uh, during your comments. So I would encourage you to hang around and uh, see if we can answer some of those questions. Uh, Chair Paisley, I think we have one more speaker who signed up online. Okay, that's the last one I have. Do you have a name? Jim Young. Jim Young. Jim Young. I think he's the last speaker that signed up online. Thank you. It's not on my list, but uh, he he's online. I'm here. <laughs> the board will entertain it. I think it's appropriate. I think it's appropriate for the board to entertain it. Sure. Okay. Yes. Okay. I thought you were saying he was online. He's here first. No, no, he signed up <laughs> he signed online. Up. He's here in person. Okay. <laughs> he's on the front line. I thought he said he was <laughs> I thought you were zooming in on us. I knew, I knew this gentleman. I saw him sitting there. I'm trying to figure out. Trust online. me. I would not come to this thing if I wasn't going to speak. <laughs> I get enough of board meetings. Um, my name is Jim Young, and I, I'm here as a representative of Durham Pistol and Rifle Club. I'm the president of the club. Um, I don't know the number. It's Jim Minor Road, South Jim Minor Road, Hall River. Um, and I'm just here representing my members um, because. You know, there's any time there's uh, any kind of new uh, firearm registration or guidelines or anything, you know, we just want to make sure that they were okay. And uh, I know the last meeting I was at, <clears throat> the county attorney had changed, made some edits and stuff, and uh, it, it seemed fine. The first draft was open-ended, open to all kinds of interpretation. And my only worry is if we get, uh, God forbid, we get a liberal sheriff or a liberal commission, you know, um, gun ranges are, they're gone. Um, we've been around since 1946. Um, I'm not gonna speak against the regulations. Um, I, I honestly don't have a problem with them the way the county attorney changed them. Um, I love this man right here to death. I have nothing but trust for him. Um, we've got uh, not quite 200 acres at our range and uh, I, Cartasi, Mr. Cartasi, I respect you, but I'm gonna tell you where you went wrong with your business. It's too small. You don't have enough land. You need a buffer. There's a NRA range book. It's about 130 bucks, it might be more now. Buy it, read it, know it. Um, I'm not gonna argue with Richard about noise because everything he said is true. He is the expert, I've known him for 30 some years. But uh, I think the only reason we're even talking about it is because, you know, we, once again, all due respect, it's an insult when you run ads about, hey, you want to find out what it's like to be on a rooftop of Benghazi. I'm a service disabled veteran. That's an insult. That's an insult to a lot of veterans. Nobody wants to know what it's like to be on the roof of, of Benghazi, a building in Benghazi. You don't want that. I would suggest not advertising like that 
you don't have enough land to go full auto. I don't care what anybody tells you, you don't have enough land. I speak from experience and I don't know if the sheriff's ever had any complaints about our range. We've been around for a long time. I've only been president since 2016, but I don't want to begrudge anybody having a gun range. That place was better off a church and before that I think it was Al's Fine Foods. It was better off a church, find more land somewhere. Nobody's saying you can't have a gun range, but right there, too many people around you, too many good people, too many farmers, it's too small unless you want to make it small arms or something like that. That's just my two cents. I wish you all the luck in the world. I appreciate y'all. I hope you have a good evening. I'm going to go eat. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Go in the house. Let me remind speakers, that's the last speaker anyway. Jim? Hey, he's not listening. You left. Um, speakers cannot address people in the audience. But I took what he said as talking about what you were saying as opposed to trying to give anyone in the audience instruction. Uh, Mr. Carter disagrees with me and thinks I should have calmed him down. <laughs> but in any event, uh, he did not ask for responses from anyone in the audience, which is why I did not gavel that down. Okay, we next have the consent agenda. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Mm -hmm. Second. Any comments? All in favor, signify by saying A. Aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? Okay. We have now gone beyond our consent agenda. You can see that's a bunch. And Ray okay. Vipperman is up again. We've taken care of that. That's already. right. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Chad Laws, David Carter. Good evening, uh, commissioners. Yeah. Good to see all of you tonight. Um, I'm Chad Laws uh, with the Sheriff's Office, and I happen to be the chair of the Alamance County Juvenile Crime Prevention Council. We've got a couple of other folks here with us as part of the uh, JCPC. Uh, we have our vice chair, Amanda Ferris, uh, who also is with uh, Department of Juvenile Justice, and uh, Susan Evans serves as our treasurer. And we also have David Carter, who's our uh, regional uh, or a local area consultant with uh, Department of Public Safety uh, who helps us out a lot with our uh, Juvenile Crime Prevention Council. So I just want to give you a, a quick overview because you've got some things on your agenda tonight to approve regarding our JCPC. So just a little bit of a uh, brief history of uh, the JCPC. So JCPCs were sort of born <coughs> out of uh, some legislation called the Juvenile Justice Reform Act of 1998. Um, it revised the juvenile code uh, so that uh, more work was being encouraged with youth in the community as opposed to sending youth to training schools and what we call youth development centers these days. So the, the push was to work with, um, with more youth in their community and see if we could find resources to, to help uh, youth in the community as opposed to sending them off somewhere to be uh, helped and provided services. So uh, there were some statutory uh, responsibilities that were laid out in that uh, Justice Reform Act which then came to local boards of commissioners in order to receive some funding. Um, and as a result of that, juvenile crime prevention councils were born out of that legislation. Um, and each county has a JCPC. There's obviously 100 around the state. Um, and those JCPCs uh, have a comprehensive planning process to try to develop programs and services to help youth and families um, deal with any issues that they may have and try to keep them out of the juvenile justice system as possible uh, if possible but there's a lot of intervention services that are offered as well so oh, sorry yeah thank you 
That'd be great. So just a couple of uh, snippets here about uh, statewide uh, versus Alamance County. Um, so it is a partnership between our state, the county, and local program providers. Uh, we have a lot of nonprofit agencies around the state that are funded by JCPCs, uh, over 600 around the state. Um, as I mentioned, uh, all of our 100 counties have a JCPC. You can see how many youth were served. You know, over 20,000 youth were served uh, in last fiscal year. And then when you look at it from a local standpoint in Alamance County, uh, you've got uh, 236 youth and families that were served just right here in our county, uh, which is we're in Judicial District 15, which also includes uh, Orange County and Chatham County. And you can see our number is over double. Uh, the population here, we served over double the amount of um, Orange County and Chatham County put together. So um, we have a lot of services being offered here in our county and a lot of youth are being touched by those services and those programs. So uh, move on to the next one. So the legislative intent, like I said, all of this was born out of uh, some uh, general statutes that were passed out of that Justice Reform Act. The basic legislative intent is to prevent juveniles who are at risk in our community from becoming delinquent. Um, and you know our JCPCs are set up to provide the needed services for those that are those youth that are already in the system, um, and they're they're sort of a philosophy. It's it's a comprehensive strategy, providing the right services for the right child at the right time. Um, and so you can read through. I'm not going to read all the bullet points there, um, but. Um, we work to do uh, or we do this work at the community level but in partnership with um, DPS and, and the state um, you can tell at the bottom point there on this slide we try to bring together a very diverse group of um, individuals uh, and, the, and organizations that serve youth in our communities to help us as part of this planning process and to serve on the uh, JCPC so a little bit about the powers and the duties of the JCPC. Again, all this is laid out in general statute. Um, our council has a duty to look at our local data and to try to make um, sure that we're funding the right kind of programs that uh, are made available to meet the needs of the youth in our community. Um, some of this programming that we fund may include court ordering parents to participate in the process as well. Um, so there's a lot of different things that, uh, that we try to do through our JCPC. Um, so what does a JCPC look like? If you can go to the membership slide there. This again is laid out in statute as to who we need to have on our council in terms of members, who's responsible for meeting the legislative intent and the duties that were established by statute. Uh, these are uh, the folks that are uh, members on our council. It doesn't have their names on there, but in your packet you can see uh, as part of our certification, uh, you'll see our membership uh, and who's fulfilling all of these different roles. And all of these members, by the way, have to be approved by uh, the Board of Commissioners. So you've seen all of these folks' names come through uh, on an annual basis or uh, uh, every two years. In terms of our um, uh, JCPC officers, we have a chairperson, obviously, a vice, uh, vice chair and a uh, treasurer. In Alamance County, we use um, our administrative budget to employ an administrative assistant who fulfills the duties of a secretary, of the secretary role. So we don't have a secretary as part of our JCPC um, officers for Alamance County. And that's pretty standard practice uh, across the state and other areas as well. Um, we have several different committees. These are the folks, the members that uh, are part of these committees, these are the folks that do the mandated legislative work throughout the year. So whether it's the risk and needs ass assessment committee who looks at that local data and tries to figure out, okay, what kind of programs do we need to help uh, youth in our community? Uh, the monitoring committee that uh, goes and looks at the operation of programs and looks at their data um, and what kind of work they're doing with the youth in our community, you know, uh, making sure that those programs are being good stewards of the money that they're um, awarded. 
And then, of course, we have a funding committee that reviews the proposals. Um, I'm just speaking about a couple of the different committees here, but a funding committee that reviews uh, the proposals each year for services in our community and makes those recommendations not just to our council, but then it it comes before you all uh, to approve as well. And I'll uh, go over that in just a second. Um, we also, as a funding committee, meet monthly to review how programs are spending their money, looking at their data to make sure that, uh, again, they're being the best stewards as possible with the money that they're being awarded. Um, some of the annual tasks, I won't go through all of these, but <clears throat> I mentioned a couple of them already. Looking at our local data and using that to plan for the services that our council funds uh, on an annual basis. Looking at any service gaps in the community to see where we might need to try to find other programming. Um, developing that RFP that goes out on an annual basis you know, bringing those applicants in, reviewing their proposals and interviewing them. And then I mentioned evaluation of our programs, that monitoring piece. Um, and then, of course, we make those funding decisions as a, as a council and bring those to you all in what we call a county funding plan. And that is also part of your packet tonight uh, that we're asking approval for for next fiscal year. Um, also part of that um, uh, annual plan or what's required by statute is a JCPC certification and you'll see that as part of your packet as well um, that makes sure that um, if you'll go to that next slide this is kind of why the JCPC certification is important um, it defines the membership which I already mentioned or talked about um, it's basically saying that we have bylaws in place, we've covered conflict of interest with our members, um, we're following all the other legislative parameters within, within our meetings, communicating with the public about our meetings and how to get involved, um, and then, you know, basically making sure that the Board of Commissioners has signed off on it and appointed the actual members to our JCPC that are going to perform these legislative uh, requirements and tasks. Um, go to the next slide. So <clears throat> we have uh, some, some structures in place in terms of our decision-making tools to help us with these funding decisions. I mentioned the risk and needs data that we review on an annual basis, the monitoring process, um, not just our local JCPC members, but also David from a state perspective can go in and do monitoring as well, especially for new programs. Um, programs have to meet certain measurable objectives at a six month and a 12 month time period. All that's reported out uh, to our JCPC. Uh, let's see. Um, all the agencies have to have fiscal controls in place to manage the funds, and that's something that uh, David and other consultants have, you know, they, they help us make sure that those controls are in place as well and they're following uh, DPS policy. And again, having that comprehensive strategy, strategy, having the right services available for the right children and at the right time. Uh, in terms of the funding process, um, this process is a partnership between the state, our local JCPC, our county finance office, and you all, the Board of Commissioners. So you can sort of see the flow chart as to how funding takes place and the approval process. Obviously it starts with the RFP. We review the proposals. The funding committee makes recommendations to the Board of Commissioners. And then we bring that to you all to approve in the county funding plan uh, on an annual basis. And then, of course, the money is dispersed to programs um, from the state. Um, it actually comes to the county, and then the county funds uh, the programs from that level. That's kind of how it passes through. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, so uh, you can see on the next slide some of the different program types that our JCPC funds are available uh, to uh, be spent on. Um, we don't always get proposals. We don't always have a need for all of these different programs in our community, and we certainly don't get proposals for all of these different program types either. Um, go to the next slide. Uh, in terms of the allocation that we receive from the state for Alamance County, uh, we're at $430,442. So that's the total amount that uh, our county receives and then our JCPC looks at uh, this target population and um, we look at the data and we look at uh, what programs uh, are being proposed from the RFP and then from that we make um, 
funding recommendations. So currently, just wanted to show you what kind of programs and agencies we have being funded this current fiscal year. We're very fortunate to have uh, the amount of money that we do to be able to fund a variety of programs for youth uh, and families in Alamance County. It's not always the case in, in other counties, but we're very fortunate. Um, and so currently we have the Exchange Club has four different programs that they're operating that are being funded, and they're all different types of programs, whether it's an interpersonal skill building uh, program or a substance abuse uh, counseling, treatment and counseling program. We also have another agency called uh, Roots and Wings, um, who uh, their home office is in Person County. That's where they originated, but they've set up an office here in Alamance County, and it's everything's going well. Um, and they offer or they provide a restitution and community service program for our um, county, as well as a teen court program uh, for Alamance County. Um, and of course, we have the small amount of money that's allocated for our uh, administration budget. Um, so then looking at next fiscal year for 2023-2024, this is what our council is recommending to you all in terms of the funding plan. Um, again, the Exchange Club uh, has proposed to offer three programs um, at the amounts listed there on the slide, and then Roots and Wings uh, has proposed to offer three programs uh, as well. The additional program is the new uh, Alamance Juvenile Opportunity Bridge, which is a uh, program that's set up for youth that are um, doing community service to go down to Alamance Community College and actually learn different aspects of different careers in hopes that they would rather take that path as opposed to getting involved in the further involved in the justice system. Um, <coughs> at least, uh, I mean, we'd love them for them to be become attorneys and be involved in that way in the justice system. But um, we're trying to, uh, you know, look at other ways of encouraging youth to stay on the right track and, you know, uh, be more career oriented and, and have that in their mind. So um, that's what our funding proposal looks like for next fiscal year. I'm going to hand it off to David because there is, um, if you want to go to the next slide there, there is a local match requirement that um, programs have to uh, put forward uh, as part of their uh, proposal and if they get funded. Uh, so I'm going to let da David speak about the um, local match requirement. Well, good evening. I'll try to be very brief um, just on this slide. Um, the allocation that uh, Mr. Laws was talking about is the DPS uh, juvenile justice allocation that we receive uh, based on the youth population for Alamance County. Every uh, county gets a allocation from the state and then there's a match. It's either a 10 percent or 20 percent or 30 percent match based on the size of the county. So um, Alamance County, Chatham County, and Orange Counties are a 30% required uh, match. Um, so uh, with um, the previous years, uh, these uh, nonprofits with Exchange Club and Roots and Wings, um, they've been very creative. Um, they used in-kind, uh, such as rent that they're already paying for buildings. Um, Roots and Wings have used their own salary time, where basically they're working for free um, to try to just make ends meet um, to get that 30 percent required match um, or they may use um, a van that the agency purchased years ago um, to try to uh, get that match um, other counties are uh, creative um, as well um, there are county counties matches that are available um, like Orange and Chatham um, provides a county match um, or county office buildings um, can be considered a match or um, county property. So um, then they blend funds as well with other um, United Way or Governor's Crime Commission grants. Um, so it's, it's really a partnership, um, you know, as um, um, County Manager York said, it's, it's, it's it's a pass through, but it's also it's a it's a state and county partnership um, where the money does flow to the county. 
and then it's dispersed to the um, programs and uh, the JCPC does work really hard um, each year as Mr. Laws had um, talked about as far as all those committees and um, the risk and needs committee um, I'm uh, my, this is my first year as a consultant here in Alamance, um, and so I helped them with the risk and needs um, committee this year, um, and just you know seeing the amount of um, the percentages that were over the state um, average where Alamance was higher, um, you know in the youth um, risk categories um, as far as uh, youth that were running away from home and uh, had a violent uh, history uh, as far as their family members um, or there was some inconsistent and inadequate supervision at home um, substance abuse alcohol drugs mental health um, that's all in your packet there that shows all of the risk and needs information from 21 22 uh, chief court counselor Amanda Ferris her team of uh, great court counselors, they do a Yazi assessment, and that is a youth assessment screening instrument. And that takes about two hours <coughs> if they do 135 questions on the youth and family. And um, that is where all that data comes from. And um, it just gleans all that information uh, from that family and that youth and also the school and um, comes up with all of that information that is kind of shocking um, you know to know that you know you've got the youth and the families that have those needs um, and that's what it's all about is trying to address the needs locally um, so that we can build them um, and try to prevent them from you know getting into the criminal justice system and that's what juvenile crime prevention is about so I'll end it with that. Thank you. And we thank you. Thank you. Any, Any questions? More? Any questions? Well, we need to uh, vote. Uh, basically, on their annual funding, uh, the crime, Juvenile Crime Prevention <coughs> Council annual funding plan. And that's what we'll need to vote up, upon at some point. Is the board, Mr. Turner? It, is the thirty percent match in our budget? It is in your budget for next year, in the mm. recommended budget. And this request is is for next fiscal year. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Well, are we? Um, are you? Can you go back to that last slide? Are, are we engaging in those um, in kind <coughs> contributions and uh, you know contributions of of rent and that kind of thing, which would offset the dollar value for the 30%. And what is the 30%? Yeah. A 30% match is 149 to 40. Oh, I'm sorry. 124 483 is the 30% match. And are we doing in kind donations that might offset that amount? I think you're, you have been doing that in the past. The in kind, oh, if you don't mind me speaking, <laughs> the in kind right now is being handled by the organization that is providing that service. Um, there was a period in time when the county was able to provide space to a couple of these agencies. We are no longer able to do that. So the county right now is currently not providing any in-kind match <coughs> for the, um, the Exchange Club or Roots and Wings. What was their requirement for space? Uh, so at one point in time, we had um, youth services that was across the street here in the civic building they had space there um, the county actually we just outgrew and needed that space for our own uh, programs for our own offices so they had to relocate and there was also a change in provider at that time so when the new providers came into the county they had to secure their own space um, paying their own rent so there was no in kind at that time it was just the number again Sure, one hundred twenty-four thousand four hundred eighty-three dollars. And if we don't approve the thirty percent, then JCPC goes away. It just, loses state funding, and then it goes away. It wouldn't lose the state funding. It's just that that responsibility would still be with the the agencies that are providing those services. 
Um, across the state, there are many state county agencies, counties that provide that 30% match um, to help alleviate that 30% match burden to the to the nonprofits that are providing that service within the county. So it's it's a trend across the state, and I'll let Heidi speak to that a little bit more. I don't remember voting on this in the last couple of years. I don't either. Did we? So in the last couple of years, we have had this on as a consent agenda item. Um, this year, there was a request to have JCPC come and make a presentation so that the board is aware of what they do in our community, what our board is tasked with doing, and how we're administering these state funds, um, showing the support and letting it come before this board to see these are the agencies that are providing the services and then giving you an opportunity to approve this openly, the plan. Um, approving the plan right now would not approve the 30% match as that would be covered in the manager's recommended budget. Um, if the county was to provide the match, it would allow the programs to do more because they could still use some of their in-kind and add more into their budgets um, because they could serve more kids because uh, at this moment right now programs such as Roots and Wings reported to me that they're already at their capacity for the youth that they have promised to serve for this fiscal year um, which means that basically they've served the, the, the amount of youth that they promised they would serve in the contract and they are um, kind of trying to figure out what they're going to do financially um, at this point between now and June 30th um, but if the county was to provide some funding for next fiscal year it wouldn't make it that hard for these programs to um, use some of that county cash and then use some of their own in kind to um, be able to have a you know built in to serve more kids and also be able to have more um, enhanced services um, for their for their programs and their agencies so Mr. Carter um, thinking about the uh, bridge program for you where they're getting some exposure at college yes is that a cost function to the, to the program directly or is that coming through state funding through FTEs to the college it's a partnership uh, they are putting in some funds and then some JCPC funds will be used as well so it's uh, not totally funded through <coughs> JCPC it's a good program Well, I want to first of all I want to thank you for the presentation. It was very informative, and uh, I appreciate you um, taking the time out and coming and talking to us about this. <clears throat> but I tell you what my problem is here. I think this is front running the budget. I am not going to vote for this because we have a lot of other things in our budget. I'm glad you brought me in the information <coughs> so I can make it a, an educated decision on the budget that I'm about to vote on in a month. But looking at it, I just want to thank you for making the presentation. But I think it's, I don't think it's very, it's not the right format for me to go ahead and vote for something that, that I don't even know what's in my budget, sir. I have no idea what's up. So it would be, it would be a derelict of my duty if I said yes to this, although I think you have a valid argument. But I think going forward, we can take this under advisement. Thank you for coming here and giving me a presentation, something I can take with me when I have to do uh, a hard work in making sure that everybody gets taken care of, that we can afford to take care of it. So, you know, going forward, I just want to, once again, thank you for the information. Uh, but I think it's front running the budget here. I just think we should take this under advisement and we should look at it in the whole scheme of things as we go forward. That's where I would stand. I think it's a great organization. They can do great work. But uh, $124,000 is, this doesn't seem like a lot of money, but I'm staring at a budget that's probably over $200 million. I, I'm going to have to make some choices. And I'm not saying it's off the table because I'm not saying that. 
I'm just saying that I probably need to have a little bit more um, more time before I can decide. Ms. Um, one of the ladies that spoke earlier about if you look at your checkbook, you can tell what your priorities are. I took a Christian financial thing at my church one time. We had it. And it and I went and looked at my checkbook and I thought my priority looks like it's food line. <laughs> I mean it was it's, and that's such a bold true statement because it shows what you want to spend your money on. And serving on the JCPC when I was on board of ed in a couple of years as commissioner, um, I know the work you do. And I also know since there's been raised the age up to 18, that is included a couple of years of some really hardened juveniles that are, are weaponized and. They're in the training grounds. They really are. And, um, and I also know that um, one of the big things for our young gang members that are being recruited is to make sure they don't get all tatted up because they look like little sweet children. Not like me, all tatted up, but they, um, that's, a big, that's a biggie because they kind of go underneath the radar like that. And they're also um, helping the cartel that's just hiring motorcycle gangs in this country to get guns for them because they're in the juvenile court system. So with our stats being higher than the states, in our adjacent counties, that really gives a real reality picture of what we is. I know law enforcement here is constantly in the streets with things like this, and these kids are, you know, they're shooting, they're doing everything else, and they're really getting into the drug sales because that's just easy money for some people. Um, I can't um, say this enough as to, um, you know, this is the future of our county. I'm 64. I'm not going to be. I'm not Methuselah Jr. So you know, I'm headed on out, so to speak. All of us are, when we're getting a certain age, and we've got to have the next generation prepared and ready to lead, not just a county, but a state, but a country, a local area, a school system, to be the example of what other kids want to be. Because there's always sets of eyes on the good kid and the bad kid, and you've got to choose which side you want to go to. Um, when I was on the board of education, I set, always did the appeals and transfers. And I saw some really hardcore children that were making hardcore, dangerous mistakes that did not give a flip. And, and I don't think kids wake up one day and say, you know, I just think I'm going to go shoot a school. Or I think I'm going to tell my teacher to F off. You know, I'm, they just don't do that. They are trained and groomed, and they learn that from their example of their address. So are kids worth it? Absolutely. Are, is everybody savable? No. I went to the program of Project Safe Neighborhood. And I saw that with, you know, young people this close away from spending it forever as high felony, you know, and people have been investing in them. And, um, and I just, um, I know what Roots and Wings does, and I know the family exchange, how they, they've helped some friends of mine with their kids. We have to try because I think every kid deserves that. Are they going to always make the good decisions? No. Did we? Absolutely not. And, uh, but sooner or later, we're going to either start making them or we're just going to go somewhere that we don't really want to go. And I don't want to see that happen to a young person. I don't want to be responsible for not giving them every opportunity that if they just had that one more chance, they would have done it. And uh, school is important education. We've always talked about how important education was when we were talking about the bond and building and all that. That's the first thing they ask. What are your school systems like? Well, we got to have really solid kids in our school system because they deserve that. And uh, we got to have parents that are going to man up and be parents and not use and smoke weed in front of their kids and understand why they're like that. You know, that's just reality. So uh, I can't support JCPC enough, just like I can't support law enforcement and the military enough, because I'm watching what crime is doing to my country because people don't think we need to really support our law enforcement. Nobody's perfect, but I want mm -hmm. every law enforcement agency to be as solid as they can be. And when they're running four and 500 officers short, that tells me a whole lot. I had to call Burlington Police to my church Sunday to handle a mental illness crisis, and they were excellent. And that's just what it is. So we need to really think about everything and use the big picture and what is our priorities and what is in our checkbook, because I know we're looking at a whole lot of expenses here, but you can't put a price on young people because they deserve a future, and it's on us what kind of future they get. So I asked you last year to come, and I've been waiting on you, and I'm so glad you're here because I wanted my fellow board members. I know Craig's on, that on the JCPC now, but until you walk it and see it and are on a certain committee, like I don't know nothing about the airport. I know they land planes, and that's it. They don't want me out there. But it's very important for all five of us to really get the big picture and the details because um, we're not going to agree on stuff, but we're going to agree on what's right. 
and that's the important thing. So I can't thank you enough, David, for being here. And you, Chad, you just you're such a great leader. And God bless Karen's family. That was just I hate that so bad. So I appreciate her so much. Is the academy that you and the miss, miss, uh, municipalities, sheriff's department, all take part in? Is that part of this program? It is not. It's a separate. Separate. Totally program. separate. Yes. That's a wonderful program. Uh, my wife taught school for 42 years and saw massive changes in children after completing that academy. Mm -hmm. You're referring uh, to the Junior Police Academy, correct. the county-wide yeah. uh, program. All right. Can, uh, can, can, can I make one clarification? What we're asking um, for you to approve as part of the county funding plan for JCPC tonight does not include the 30% county match. That's what I was getting ready to that, ask. That's something that uh, manager your work may be presenting to you all afterward, right. but the numbers that you see do not include that. All right, my understanding is we're approving the plan, not the funding. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. Any board member have a question about that <coughs> issue? Mr. Lashley, do you have a question on that issue? No, no, no. I'm glad you clarified it. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any other questions either. Um, I'm going to move that we approve the plan at this point. I'll make that motion. I second. I'm sorry, Craig. Motion second. Any other comments? I did have the same question about uh, premature, but you just answered that. So Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. <coughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys. And gentlemen, I agree. Wonderful presentation. <coughs> Miss Evans. He's not Miss Evans. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, are you going to introduce this, or we just we'll ask the school board to come forward? Either way is fine. No, I, I'll, I'll, I will defer to you however you would like. There we go. Mr. Hook. We'd like to acknowledge that the chair for the school board, the superintendent, Dr. Butler, uh, Ryan is also here as a school board member. Are there any other school board members here? We thank you for your presence. And Mr. Hook. Chairman, Mr. Paisley, um, board, of, uh, board of Commissioners, I'm here tonight to ask you to consider for approval a request for lottery funds in the amount of $265,000. Uh, to supplement existing funds um, that were um, arranged through appropriation in the General Assembly and also through a DPI athletic grant for the uh, press box and uh, concession stand at Eastern Alamance High School football stadium. So, so I'll give you the first shot. Just some. Um just some questions and descriptions of what you're talking about at Eastern, what you had to be using for, say, a press box. Um, we, uh, bef before I took this position, uh, my office uh, went through the design phase with an architect to design a press box and a concession stand um, that also has an observation deck that's typical for a, a high school football stadium. Um, I've got some pictures of it if you'd like me to pass those. No, I'm just curious, to you. like the observation deck. Who's up there? Is that the people that talk to the people down there? They call the ball game, like number 46 is running all the way down the left field? Yes, this would be there? someone from, from each team okay. who are uh, looking down and, and working with a headset to um, communicate with the coaches on their team. And also, uh, if there was a radio broadcast or things like that, they would be inside the uh, – 
the upper level of the press box that has glass glass front. Is that that's going to be one unit? Like what you're talking about, like a concession stand with this over top of it? Yes, ma'am. And it has one uh, ADA compliant restroom uh, on the ground floor for um, uh, folks who are in attendance. Is that the only bathroom? No, ma'am. Uh, we have restrooms about 200 okay. feet away at the stadium. Okay. Right. It's going to be a line. Okay, I'm good. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Langley, I'm okay for now. Mr. Turner. Um, Few questions, Mr. Hook. The, as I understand it, the original allocation for this was two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That was a grant, not a grant, but it was in the state budget through the General Assembly. Is that right? Yes, sir. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. And, and my understanding was that that the intent of that was to fully cover the full price for the press uh, box. I, I think that was the intent. And and now we've got a request for the total request is for almost six hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Well, the, the uh, low bid came in at $597,510 uh, with the, uh, um, the money through appropriation and the DPI uh, grant or the DP, DPI uh, athletic grant. Uh, we put those together. It was $250,000 and then $151,000. Uh, so far, we've spent on design um, $54,800. Uh, advertised in the Times News uh, for bidders, $293. Uh, and then through Hunt Electric, uh, they went ahead and bought the electric panel that was going to be needed because they knew there was going to be a shortage on electric panels. They bought that to power the temporary concession stand. So we spent 13610 on that. Uh, so right now uh, we're, we have $332,673 or $332,673. And we need six, uh, 264837 But in terms of the overall price, I mean, it seems that what was designed to be to cost $250,000 a year and a half ago or so now cost six hundred. dollars uh, Was there any value engineering that, that you guys did to, to attempt to reach the, the $250,000 price tag? The, the only thing that we've determined we could take out of this design uh, is the ADA compliant restroom. We think that could save us $50,000. If we did that, we'd have to go back into design again and resubmit to DPI uh, was, for approval. Was there. this design that is currently costing $600,000 thereabouts, uh, was that the same design that was created when the $250,000 was requested? Um, well, this was before my time, but I think the, the, um, the design and the money came in about near about the same time. I know everything we've gone through recently uh, none of the uh, figures that we have as budget numbers are quite accurate in, in fact they're off by quite a bit my, my other question kind of relates to um, to process I mean I, I watched the last board meeting uh, I wasn't there but watched it online and and I know you, you prioritized like, I think it was 29 different projects which which we appreciate uh, you know your top unfunded projects that you that you want to get funded but this project wasn't anywhere on there uh, but yet it's the first project that you're asking for money for. Um, after being here at the last meeting asking for other athletic projects. So I, I see that as a bit of a disconnect. I'm not sure why you're, you're asking for funds that, for a project that's not identified as being in the top 29 priorities and then why it's coming you know, one meeting after your last request for athletic projects. Yes, sir. I remember last time I was here, you. Uh, asked me not to bring you any surprises, and I didn't <laughs> intend to do that. Um, I, I fully thought at the time I was here last time, uh, and at the time we prepared the, the list of 29 priorities, not that all are a priority right now. We don't need all of those things. It's just a list of things that we need to look at over time. Uh, but I fully thought that this was going to come in at bu in budget uh, when we were here last time. Uh, we were at the o OSC meeting on the 27th, and right at uh, – during the meeting, I got uh, information because we had the public bid opening that, that we came in at $597,000. And I mentioned it during the closing of the OSC meeting, but uh, we knew that we had to take it back to our board. So we had to get, kind of go back through those, uh, those steps again. Well, so this has not, this request has not been through the TRC process or the oversight committee process? No, sir. Um, you know, just as a com I'll get back to that, but just as a comment, you know, when we got the $15 million for our emergency services building, we had a pretty advanced plan for that 
and then when we realized that that money was going to be woefully insufficient to cover that, we scaled back that project significantly. Um, but the fact that this hasn't gone through the oversight TRC process, I think, is important because we could have worked out some of these conversations about value engineering and about what was, you know, what was originally planned, I think, in that process. I think there remains a disconnect between this board's expectations based upon what, what y'all have presented to us in terms of priority and, and what you're identifying as your needs. Uh, I, I think we have, in many ways, the, the, I, I believe the relationships that we have between, um, between ABSS board members and, and staff has improved from what I understand it was years ago. But I think the process that we've created is worse now than it was a couple years ago. Uh, there's been a lot of turnover, I think, it, it, and it, on both boards with, with a lot of staff. Um, and I think that process, I, I don't know what's wrong with it. Maybe it needs an amendment, maybe it needs tweaking, maybe it needs scrapping, I, I don't know. But I think it's not working or else we would have knowledge of this request in advance. We would be part of the decision making on, on what needs to be done. Um, and I feel like we have a process that maybe it's flawed, but, but we're choosing not to use it. And we shouldn't have a process and not use it. And so I, I, I think that's, that's a flaw in, what, in how this request is coming to us. That's all. Well, I, I want to say two things. I, I truly uh, uh, do want to collaborate uh, with the board, and I know that our board wants to collaborate. I want to um, uh, just clarify that I brought this now because time is of the essence. The uh, concession stand that was on site was condemned and it was yep. torn down. So they have no press box or no concession stand. It's been leveled. Last year they paid uh, $20,000 uh, from uh, my department's budget for scaffolding to serve this purpose. And so that would be the plan again this year is to put $20,000 into scaffolding uh, to get through the football season this year. But because it's for the community, and, and they're really concerned about it. That's, that's why I brought it on. But I do understand the process of TRC and OSC, and I respect that, and, and, and I, I do think that's the right way to go. Thank you. Mr. Carter. Well, I have to admit, we, we have come a long way, and uh, I feel like our relationship is stronger than it's been in my entire tenure. So that, I feel, is good about what we're trying to do. I was kind of surprised to see we have a list of priorities and then this wasn't even on it. Um, but I understand you said that basically your bid came in after that list was presented to us. So. Mm. Well, you're not going to have a building completed in time for football season anyway, are you? No, sir. We'd just like to get on and set up a contract so that the uh, contractor could order materials and start working on the site um, with hopes that we could get it completed during the season. But if not, we'll, we'll complete it afterwards. I guess if you, I, I know my colleagues have spent a ton of time looking at numbers, so uh, uh, and our, our staff has spent a ton of time looking at numbers, and this is just one more number. Um, John, what are your thoughts? What, what is your time frame for completion? Well, I think an optimistic time frame would be the end of October, but based on how things have gone in the recent uh, year or two, everything is really uh, going beyond expectations as far as completion dates and budgets. All right, these funds are coming out of uh, lottery funds, not out of our general budget, correct? That's correct. So it really does not have an impact directly on the budget that we're getting ready to pass. But it will have impact on other things that come it, up on the list. Absolutely. That's why it's very important that we stick to this priority list, Mr. Hook. It's extremely important. I understand. I just want everybody to know where the funds were coming from. 
Any other comments? Um, just, just one. I can remember when I was on the Board of Education, the condition of this, what you're talking about, was bad. It was really bad. It really wasn't safe. We got every ounce out of it we could, kind of like the whole history of a school system. Um, and scaffolding, that's metal, isn't it? That's like what people use and go up a building, right? Well, it's not exactly what like you would see. Like monkey bars. Kind of. Well, it, this is a safe and secure design that's made for this kind of situation. It wouldn't be what you'd see if you were constructing a, a brick a veneer uh, on a building or something like that. Okay. Does it have a roof? Um, well, we can put a, uh, no, a right. tent over it. No, it, it doesn't okay. have it. No. Okay. So it didn't have size. What kind of steps did it have? Really steep? Well, I, I haven't been to it when it was okay. up last year. I wasn't in the position. Well, well, I'm just saying, if I'm up there calling the ball game and I'm on a metal situation and all of a sudden there's a thunderstorm warning, I remember that guy in uh, the great outdoors that kept getting struck by lightning <laughs> and he had a thing going down the side of his head and I don't want people sitting up there becoming smoking hot, so to speak. Um, you know, we, this board talks about all the time our top ten, our top ten. And like I've said before, that top 10 can change in the middle of a bull or break-in or something like that. It's a constant revolving door of what matters and what costs money. And everything with the school system, the first time I ever saw the budget, the numbers were two and a half inches long. I thought, how do you write that check? You know, it was just unbelievable. And I was so clueless as to how the school operated until I got in that position. And, and pr there's still so much to learn. But... Um, you know, um, I know how hard the community of Mebane worked for that field hut, if that's what you want to call it. I mean, they worked their tails off, and they had to come before us with the every cent accountable. We would not let them build that until we knew they had the money in the bank, unlike another situation that we had to deal with. And so um, I, just, um, I just don't want to see us put anybody that comes to a ball game where it's all about youngins playing ball and having a good time and being smart and safe and their family there to watch them put anybody in danger on something high like that. This chicken little here ain't going to get up on it, and um, even if Tom Brady, well, maybe, if Tom Brady's down there. But I'm just saying, we just, you know, we, every time we turn around, it's something because that is just what it is. It's the same way with the county. It's the same way with the state. It's the same way with the country. And we just have to decide what really matters, and everything matters. And that's just a real tough job, but we got to do the right thing by our kids and our citizens. Dr. Miller. I'm going to um, step in just a minute to it. And uh, let me say this. Senator Gailey was gracious enough to allocate this money for uh, the Eastern Press Box. And that's my urgency, is for someone looking out for us at that level, we want to get this done. I apologize on behalf of previous leaders that did not have a quote that was accurate, that did not have a timeline to share with you, that did not have a plan on paper to come to you. I can't fix that. But I'm here tonight to tell you that we need this done because Senator Gailey wants it done, and we owe that to her because she fought to get that money for us. So I would appreciate your support. I, I totally agree with the process. I would also like to say on a little different note, um, we're all ears to figure out what the new process could look like to make sure there are no surprises. This was a, a, a genuine surprise. The OSC met. I think he found out right then and there, and it was not appropriate time to bring it up because our board hadn't heard it, because that's not protocol either. Okay. So being transparent, we own that, and uh, we're going to stand here and own that and, and work together with you to try to fix it. But the importance of the Eastern Press Box is, is more than ABSS. It's uh, the allocation and where it came from. So I appreciate your support tonight if you can give it. Thank you. Before you step down, the public, uh, two public speakers were talking about us taking uh, capital funds from the school board. Uh, the money that they're talking about, I think they don't understand in that. That was money that we set aside not for the school board, but to pay off the debt on the 2018 bond. Uh, do you agree with that? I do. I do. And I think it's, it's very complex, and I appreciate them coming and trying to be advocates for Alamance Burlington Schools. I appreciate greatly. But, um, yes, there needs to be clarification, and that goes back to the process. 
being on the same page? I think the board in 2018 misnamed the fund. It was named Cap Fund, but it isn't. It's really repayment of the bond that was passed in 2018. Is that correct? The way you're saying it, that, that makes sense to me. All right. So we're not taking any money away from the school. We're simply now not needing that money that we put aside to pay off the bond for the bond. We've got it covered. From 2018? Yes, sir. Thank you. I pre thank you. appreciate that yes, clarification. All right, thank you. Um, I'm not finished. Okay. I did not want to put Mr. Hook on the spot for, for, the, for this comment. <laughs> that's that's on me. That's on me, I'll and that's that's why I'm here. I'll ask you that question separately because I knew that uh, Greg yep. was not. <laughs> uh, but in any event, you were principal here at that time, I guess, in 2018. Uh, Seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else? What will happen? And I'm asking possibly a legal counsel, Landau County Manager, or Mr. Hook, or Dr. Butler, what happens to that grant from the state if we do not approve this, this request? That's scary to know the answer to, honestly. Um, I can tell you my prediction is we won't see any more appropriations from that level if we don't use this wisely. Um, we'd be remiss not to, to stand here and say that uh, we have to have the additional the additional funds from lottery in order to meet the lowest bid. So if that doesn't happen, we can't move forward. There is no lower bid that matches what we have. And those lottery funds go to you regardless. With your blessing. The appropriation, how it's spent, mm -hmm. is our decision. Correct. And also I would add to, in, in, in our defense, so to speak, the, the top priority list. I was looking at that appropriation as a little different because that money had already been earmarked for us. What we did not expect was for the number that we needed to be more than what was earmarked. And that's, again, why we're here. And the school board has already uh, met and approved this request, is that correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. So now it comes to us after the school board has already approved it. It's in your hands. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Carter. Um. I listened to the comments that were made earlier, and uh, I'm the only member of the board that was on the board with the funding for the debt service was created in unison. <laughs> and so I knew that those funds were intended for debt service, not for capital uh, capital purposes. Um, I didn't understand. I, I wasn't aware where we were in it until we started working on this year's budget, but. I don't think anybody in the chamber or anywhere else campaigned any harder for those school bonds than I did. And I was also running for a county commission, which is a tough act. I definitely support the schools and really resent any implication that we as a board don't support education in Alamance County. We have an extremely difficult time trying to find the money to run all the different departments and take care of all the different people that have worked with working for Alamance County and to do it in such a way that we meet the needs of our citizens. I mean, it's a balancing act. We have to keep people that are trained. I remember two years ago, the sheriff spent $750,000 training replacements. Now that money much could have been much better spent keeping people and we're trying to go through the same thing all over again and we're dealing with a really difficult budget year and a rebound it's an extremely difficult time for us to be trying to manage budget and deal with issues that are bringing us all to the edge sometimes Understood. but support the schools i think you can say unequivocally we all do and we appreciate we that. We want to work more closely together. And uh, um, I, for one, will make a motion that we approve, approve this request so that we don't lose the funding we already have for this need. I'll second. I got one question. 
Just one sorry, question. Sorry. Just, just to clarify. No, it's just, just a math. It's a math issue. Um, <clears throat> just looking at your, your numbers here. Your un unallocated balance is two point three two five. Is that correct of this of this lottery fund? I, I basically, what I'm trying to figure out is once we give this money, if we give this money to you, how much do you have left in this? In lottery, we'll have one point uh, one million. So right uh, right now, we have two million three hundred twenty five thousand mm -hmm. in there. Uh, but on May first, I came to you. And you all approved one million one hundred forty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, that's sitting at DPI, and and they approved during the last week of the month. That's another part of this. If we get this approved, if you approve it, uh, we can rush this in and get it in that same stack. So it would be a, a, approved at the same time at DPI, and then it would be available to us the first week of June. But if you uh, approve uh, tonight's request of two hundred sixty-five thousand. Uh, you'll have uh, 1 million 180 thousand left I was just making sure that the number that I had in front of me was correct yes and, sir. That, that and let me clarify that even further okay. please um, so the uh, unallocated balance that you have right now is prior to the 265 being approved That's I wanted to give you what the balance was with the two hundred sixty five thousand dollars being approved they will then have a balance um, as of the March report of nine hundred fifteen thousand two hundred sixty four dollars and sixty cents However, the state has put out their April 26th report and we received over $10,000 of interest. So add that to your 915 and we're back up to about 925. Okay, thank you so much for pointing that out because I saw a discrepancy and I just want to make sure yes. that. That but, was the balance prior okay. to this being approved. That's all it was, it was, yes. uh, thank you. I okay. wish I could have somebody get $10,000 interest. <laughs> I can't even, I don't even, I don't really, I can't even imagine. Okay, any other questions or comments? All in favor of approving this allocation signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? No. Okay, four to one. Correct? Thank you. Thank you, board. Thank you. You and I have to sign a, a contract which is not filled in yet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, I'm going to call on the county attorney for good this uh, gun ordinance. Yes, good evening, board. Thanks for having me here again to talk about firearms. Um, this is the same ordinance we have discussed in prior weeks and prior sessions. Uh, I've made some clarifications and a few changes based on board feedback. I uh, also want to address some concerns from the public that have been addressed and pointed out during public, uh, public speakers and, and just clarify for the board also that um, the ordinance as drafted does not apply only to shooting ranges. In fact, nowhere in the ordinance does the word shooting range occur. Um, it's of general application to all persons in the county and it's designed that way on purpose. Um, so to go through the ordinance, once again, I'll point out and clarify that nothing in the ordinance shall be construed to prohibit the otherwise lawful possession or carry of any firearm. I know the board has expressed some concern about making sure that that is reiterated in any ordinance the board might pass. Also to clarify that the language in section three requires that in order for a person to violate the proposed <coughs> ordinance, the person would have to act carelessly or recklessly in disregard for the safety of others. So to clarify for the board, that doesn't mean that a person accidentally discharges a firearm in such a way that the ordinance might be triggered. It requires some conscious, careless, or reckless act on the part of the person who does in fact violate the ordinance. I'm also going to clarify a few of the terms. I know sometimes these things get muddied, so I wanted to make sure the board and the public is aware of what we're talking about. The standards in play here. Um, negligence is the standard that applies in any civil action. Um, this requires a level of culpability higher than mere negligence. This requires recklessness. Recklessness is defined as the state of mind where a person deliberately pursues a course of action while consciously disregarding any risks stemming from such action. So again, this is not just a situation where a person 
discharges a firearm and a bad result occurs. This is a situation where a person understands that their actions might have adverse consequences, but the person still decides to take the action anyway. That's what we're trying to curtail by enacting an ordinance like the one we proposed here tonight. Section four, I got some feedback from the public and I wanted to make sure that we all understand and I wanted to propose an ordinance that allows for clarification related to what type of backstops might be effective in stopping a bullet that would keep a person in compliance with the ordinance. We've inserted language that says adequate natural or constructed barriers may be used as a means of complying with this section. So again, the requirement is that the person keep the projectile on that person's property or on property they have permission to use and it clarifies that a natural or constructed barrier may be a method of doing that. No, no changes were made to section five from the last reading of the ordinance or to section six, six or seven, but we have made some changes to section eight based on board feedback. I know there's been some concern about the different methodologies for enforcement of the ordinance once again, there is a misdemeanor component or an option for enforcement as a misdemeanor, but also an option for enforcement as a violation, uh, as a civil penalty. So the officer in question would have either of those options available in terms of how the ordinance might be enforced. And there's also a graduated scale proposed in this version of the ordinance related to that civil penalty. So the first violation would be $100. The second violation would be $250, and a third or successive violation would be a $500 penalty. I know the board had some concern about the amount of penalty that might be applied and wanted to clarify that up to $500 meant that there would be a graduation of enforcement ability. Also wanted to remind the board about some of the changes that have occurred in the last few years related to how misdemeanor violations of local ordinances impact people. So the state a few years ago really sought to undertake an effort to curtail excessive uh, penalties from violations, misdemeanor violations of local ordinances. So one of the things that's now included in section 14-4, which is the state's law regulating how criminal enforcement of local ordinances works, says that a person may not be found responsible or guilty of a local ordinance violation if no new alleged violations of the local ordinance within 30 days from the date of the initial alleged violation. So if I go to court and I'm standing in front of the judge and I'm asked, have you violated or have you been alleged to have violated the same ordinance within the last 30 days? And the answer is no. The court at this point is without option to actually find that person guilty of the misdemeanor crime which that person is charged. So really what the state tried to do here is say, we want to give local governments the ability to curtail people who are continually and recklessly disregarding local ordinances, but not to penalize people who are doing so on an infrequent basis. That's not a product of our local drafting. That's a product of the state's efforts undertaken in 2019 that now apply to every criminal ordinance that we have in our code book. So just to clarify that, a few more things I wanted to talk about related to the ordinance in addition to what we've drafted and changed this time. I know there's been some concern about enforcement. Um, I want to make sure that the board is aware that if this ordinance is enacted, um, that I'm available to Alamance County Sheriff's Office staff to do training. I'm certainly available to consult with them on the issues that might arise as they undertake enforcement. And I'm willing to do training for the deputies who would be enforcing the ordinance, help them understand what types of activities might violate the ordinance and which things might not. I uh, also want to let the board know that I'm willing to come back on a semi-annual basis every six months and inform the board as to the number of alleged violations that have occurred within the past six months and also the number of those violations that have resulted in any sort of criminal penalty. Uh, and finally, I want to remind the board that local ordinance are at all times subject to review and revision by the board. So if we decide to undertake this effort, we decide to adopt the ordinance. That doesn't mean that two months from now, six months from now, two years from now, a different board or the same board might not decide to undo that action by rescinding the ordinance at that point. So I tried to address some of the concerns that I think have been voiced by the community 
and the board in response to this tonight, but does the board have any further questions for me? I think we need to know that the uh, civil penalty goes back to the school system, does it not? It does. That's a great question, and yes, that's correct. So if we fine people here, any collected fines go straight back to the school system. I want the general public to know that if you file a, a civil action pursuant to this ordinance, if, it, if it's passed, that they don't get the money. That's correct. The money doesn't go to the sheriff's office or to the county. So if we collect a civil penalty based on what's enacted, that money goes to the school system. Mr. Turner. Nothing, thank you. I think he's explained it pretty well. <clears throat> Mr. Lashley? I agree. It's, it's Mr. very Lashley. good explanation. I thank you. I mean, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I do have a couple of comments. Yes, sir. One, I think it's extremely regrettable that this has turned into, in large part, calls I get, the emails I receive into a personal thing against the Rad Range only. Um, I haven't received any other calls, and there are a number of ranges in Alamance County. But I think this is a personal war uh, that the community is taking upon itself. Um, and I really, that saddens me. Um, I, I wish people could get along and talk about things. I know that you have spent thousands of dollars to improve the safety um, at your own expense. Yes. I don't have any other comments on this issue. Do we have a motion? I'll move that we approve the ordinance as amended. And I'll, one statement that I'll say to go along with the motion, I see this issue as not unlike zoning in that it is the intersection of two rights that our citizens enjoy. The right to do what you want to on your own property versus the right to enjoy your property without impediment. And where do you draw the line when those two rights intersect? Um, the ordinance is not directed at any particular individual or any particular use. I think it strikes the right balance, and so therefore I'm supporting it. Thank you. I'd like to make a comment, too. Um, I can say that uh, I know this has gone on for a long time. We've been hearing this conversation for quite a while. And Mr. Lashley and I took, took it upon ourselves to visit with uh, Mr. Cartasian Look at what he's doing out there. I will say that he seems to be doing a yeoman's job to try and protect and try and remedy what it, what has happened out there. However, there's nothing in the world that anybody can do about noise. State law prohibits. If if we had zoning and could zone, we can't zone out an existing gun range by state law. There's nothing we can do about the noise coming off of it. Um, that's just a factor. It's a, fun it's a function of the shooting. Um, I mean, we've struggled with that ever since the first comment came up. I can't count the times I've had to repeat that same sentence over and over and over again. We cannot pass an ordinance and we cannot zone out a gun range. State law specifically pr protects them. So this is, this is designed, this ordinance I feel is designed to protect against a willful act, even if it may not be properly directed, willful act of somebody to cause somebody else harm, either damage to property or the, God forbid the the death or injury of an individual. That's all this, this ordinance is designed to try and do. Make somebody think before they think about just firing just indiscriminately into the air or off of a gun range. You know what your boundaries are, adhere to them. And uh, I, I, I applaud Mr. Cartassi for <coughs> agreeing to post the the, the ordinance and uh, um, 
having a, a copy of the ordinance uh, recognized and acknowledged by his members before they can shoot on the range. I mean, they are, can't say they are not going to be informed. I don't know what any of the other gun rangers are doing. I haven't heard of any comments from any of the gun rangers, but my primary concern has been for the safety of our citizens the whole time. Um, and I will say to the to Mr. Cartassi and to his neighbors, you guys, and I said this to Mr. Cartassi and his team when I was out there with Mr. Lashley, you guys need to sit down and work out a plan. If if you go into court, and I may be getting in Mr. Mr. Stevens' territory here, but if you go into court, in all likelihood you're going to be ordered to mediate a situation like this. Am I correct? And that just means simply sitting down and coming to a solution. Um, I, I, I hope that's what can happen because we're at our wit's end as to what we can do. I have a point of order here. I just want to make sure uh, this is the first reading, technically. That's so there's correct. No, there's only going to be a vote to take it to the second, correct? No, you take two two votes. Is that correct? Right. Th that's correct. We'll take Thank two you. votes. But I think the safest course of action, because of the amount of changes that have been made, is to consider a revision like this the first reading. Correct. So we'll have to vote on the same language once again before it's effective. Do you foresee any more changes? Because I do believe that I think this is like the second or third time, but I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Well, I just want to make sure. That I, I certainly don't have any needed changes. Okay. Um, I've been trying to respond to the feedback from the board and the community, but Perfect. if you're satisfied that we've met the objectives, then I don't have any further revisions planned. Okay. Ms. Thompson. Uh-uh. <laughs> Point of order, Mr. Chairman, we don't have a second. Okay. Here's what we do, Ms. Thompson. Yes. No, I said uh-uh. No. Well, I thought you did. No. Oh, I, th I, didn't th I didn't think you did. I thought you were just asking. No, I said yeah. no, no thank you, and I meant no. Yeah. And oh, then I'm sorry. I'm, Correction. I'm, we have, okay, yeah. well, I'll second them. I'll, yes. I'll second them. Thank you. We have a uh, let, me, let me add on just general comments. I think this puts the Sheriff's Department in just an impossible position. A deputy goes out, investigates a complaint. Now, he, the deputy on the site, has got to determine what is willful, what is not. He becomes a juror or a jury on the scene to a large extent. Uh, I, th I think we're asking the Sheriff's Department to do something that's almost not possible. Uh, well, I'll just remind the board that the burden of proof for the deputy who's charging is substantially lower than what would be required for a conviction. Correct. So that gives them some leverage, but I understand your concern. Respectfully, Mr. Chairman, I think deputies and police officers do that all the time, every time they make a charge. <laughs> right. Well, not all crimes are willful. Uh, you have all kinds of crimes that are uh, negligence and other things. But this one does require willful. Does Mr. Johnson have a statement? He'd like Sheriff Johnson have a statement he'd like to make related to that. Well, <clears throat> I recommend that this ordinance is passed that Mr. Uh, that Rudy and any other range make their members read that, sign it, and then it's going to make it a lot easier for us. If we come out and a bullet has gone off of that range, there will be one one time, there better not be another one going off there. I can tell you that. Because if they sign that thing saying they're will willfully understand the rules and regulations and sign it, then I have no problem with charging somebody. And my people better not have problem. Just to clarify for the chair and <clears throat> for the record, uh, I think the recklessness standard has been found to be tantamount to culpable negligence. So that's a higher standard than mere negligence, but short of willfulness in the truest sense. So yeah. there's a bit of a gray area there, but there's some case law that supports that being a standard of proof that we can we can enforce. And I'll ask that you put that in the record for a minute. Okay. Okay. We have a motion, no second. There was a second. I seconded it. You did second it. I did. Yeah. All right. Just to clarify once again, this <laughs> is first reading. Right. That's correct. That's all I'm okay. But if it fails, it's it, right? 
Yeah. Oh. We have to come back and see. Okay. Any other comments? Yes. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, signify by saying no. Aye. No. Do we have three no's? Well, well see, how did you vote? I voted yes for the first reading. If this is the, if this is the, um, if I, I will, when we have a final reading, then, then maybe I could be a no. All right, so we have three yeses and two noes. Is that correct? This is the first reading. All right, thank you. We go to the next meeting. We'll bring this up again. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take a 10 minute break. Miss Short. <laughs> we're back to session. Are you ready, <coughs> Chairman? Ready? Please. Okay. Yes. Good evening, commissioners and members of the public. Tonight I'm here to present the fiscal year 23-24 manager's recommended budget. After a thorough analysis, intense scrutinizing of needs, and reviewing the line item details of every budget request, it's my privilege to present to you this budget. And as one of your speakers said, the budget is the best communication tool you have to communicate your priorities. During the board's annual retreat earlier this year, these were the priorities that the commissioners articulated for the upcoming year. These priorities provided the framework for the recommended budget and guided the funding recommendations. The priorities here with the green checks are the ones that are addressed by this recommended budget. We couldn't implement all of them given the reductions in spending that I am proposing. A quick overview, your property tax uh, reevaluation that was conducted this year resulted in growth of the overall tax base of $9.1 billion, generating an additional $10 million. Next year, one penny will generate $2,514,301 in tax revenue. And I'm bumping up the collection rate ever so slightly next year to project it to be 99.11%, a true testament to the taxpayers and our tax administration staff for their efforts. North Carolina General Statute 159-11 requires the local government during a revaluation year to publish a revenue neutral rate. I highlight publish as it does not require an adoption of that rate and there's been some misunderstanding with the public. Your revenue neutral rate then is the rate that when applied to the newly revalued tax base produces the same tax levy as would have been produced using the current year's tax rate as if the reevaluation re had not occurred. Your revenue neutral rate for fiscal year 24 is 0.4259, Thomas, thank you for clarifying that for me, per $100 evaluation. It does allow for an allowance of growth, so that rate can be increased, um, the revenue neutral rate can be increased by an average annual growth factor to account for any natural growth that might be occurring in the tax base. And so that amount that we have used is 3.27%. You had seen this during your uh, board retreat back in January, and that number has remained consistent. I did want to point out that even if the revenue neutral rate were adopted, some property tax owners will still have an increase in their tax bill with this growth and due to improvements that might have been made since the last reevaluation. Mm -hmm. And in the voice of Jeremy Aikens, our ever optimistic uh, tax administrator, he would want me to point out that it would also be possible for some taxpayers to experience a decrease despite um, the adjustment in the tax rate. So the revenue neutral isn't adjusted for any individual owner to remain neutral, but the bottom line of the tax base to remain neutral. All right. 
So your current year tax rate you're familiar with is currently at 65 cents. The recommended tax rate uh, for next year is 0.4543 per $100 of valuation. That will generate about $114 million in revenues. This is nearly a 20 cent reduction in your recommended tax rate for next year. It's very substantial and I don't wanna lose sight of that. Again, your revenue, revenue neutral rate is 0.4259. At that rate, you would experience $107 million in revenue. We also considered the impact of inflation, and I wanted to note that if reevaluation had not occurred, a tax increase might have been necessary to keep up with the cost escalations that we have experienced in our supplies, in our contracts, in our utilities, et cetera. The difference then between the revenue neutral and the recommended is 2.84 cents. I wanna share this slide with you just as historical perspective on the Alamance County tax rate. So the rate that I am proposing, the next closest rate that you would have had from the period of uh, 2000 to current year would have been 22 years ago in 2001 when the tax rate was 0.42. So your next lowest then would be the proposed rate next year. This slide is trying to provide some context of the tax rate on a home that would be valued at about $200,000. The average uh, value of real property investment over the last six years has increased by nearly 80%. You've heard that before. The proposed tax rate of 45.43 then would cause about a $15 more per month increase on a tax bill of a $200 home, just to give you some context. And one more contextual perspective that I wanted to give you on our proposed tax rate. This is a large scale, uh, far and wide look of regional counties surrounding Alamance. We appear to be an anomaly when we look at this, much lower than any other counties with our proposed tax rate. This reduction, again, of almost 20 cents represents a 30.1 decrease in the tax rate. All right, your general fund next year is proposed at 2.7, I'm sorry, 2,117.5 uh, that's an increase of 14.2 million, which represents approximately 7.02%. Just as a frame of reference, the consumer price index, which is one measure of inflation that we have been using for the Southeast region for April is about 5.5%. So the difference there is around 2% growth that we're seeing in spending when you account for inflation. When you look at all funds, then not just the general fund, but your other funds included, we're facing a $17.9 million increase, or about 7.44%. All right, shifting over to the revenue. So this is where the money is coming from in next year's budget. I tried to divide up for every $1, you could see the portion that was going uh, to various categories of sources are coming from various categories of sources. So uh, over 50% comes from your property taxes, sales and other taxes then is about a quarter, and then you can see the breakdown from there. Some revenue highlights for you. Uh, of course, your property tax revenue is growing. We've mentioned that number, $10 million next year. However, I wanna make sure that you notice your vehicle revenues are significantly impacted by the proposed reduction in the tax rate. So your vehicle tax revenues next year um, are expected to come in about $3.8 million less with this new proposed rate. Your sales tax is growing, but not as significantly as what we've seen in the past. We're projecting about 7.7% .7 in growth next year. Sales and services are going up, and that's primarily due to increases in your EMS fees. The other two, the only other note I'd like to mention is that on the operating transfer, transfer, now that we are appropriately funding a CIP, this was a transfer from the Capital Reserve Fund to operations to support county buildings. That is no longer needed. Uh, sorry, repeat that, please. This was an operating transfer that was 
coming that was going from capital reserve to operations to support county buildings, but we're covering that now in different ways. Right. Here is a reflection of your priorities, as we've heard from our speakers, for your expenditures. The bulk of your spending next year will be in education, followed by public safety, human services, general government, debt service, and then other. Some significant impacts that we want to make sure are made clear uh, that we experienced right out of the gate, which made uh, this budget all the more challenging. Uh, in your current year, there were some mid-year salary increases for the Sheriff's Office and detention. That added an additional $1.7 million uh, to next year to fund a full year of those new increases. You'll remember that we brought a new contract to you for detention center food. Those services next year will add an additional $771,000 to our operating costs. The state has increased the required youth detention costs. That's going up $84,000 next year. The board has already approved your capital improvement plan uh, funding for next year of $2.3 million. The board also approved a $300,000 investment on the uh, rail spur project in Mebane. In addition, the board is supporting an airport infrastructure project for an additional $400,000. We're seeing a trend in our utility costs estimated to increase uh, just under 20% by about $201,000. We also are seeing increases in our automotive supplies, including fuel, uh, resulting in about $121,000 more than current year. So when I just take these costs here that are somewhat out of our control because they've already been committed to, you're looking at about 2.34 cents out of the gate in order to approve the budget. So let me show you on the flip side what we've been working on during the budget process. This slide will highlight some of the spending reductions that we're facing for fiscal year 24. I mentioned that we reviewed all of the departmental budget requests over the last few months. During that process, I cut $18.6 million out of those requests that are not in the recommended budget. There were 37 new full-time positions requested, and I am not funding any county positions, no new positions funded by county general fund. There are, however, two positions that remain to be funded. One is a SRO, a school resource officer for the new high school that's funded through an agreement through, with ABSS. And the other is a heavy equipment operator um, out at the landfill. This is fully funded through the landfill enterprise fund, so will not require any general fund contribution. In addition, 23 vehicles were requested. I'm funding uh, or recommending to fund 12 of those. 10 are for the sheriff vehicles, one in emergency ma management, which has other funds to support it, and another in soil and water, which has a portion of designated capital reserve set aside for that vehicle. And finally, any equipment that was requested in this budget, we were able to use some remaining pandemic response funds. That's about $1.1 million to cover those needs, so you will not be required to make an appropriation for those next year. Some of the vehicles were also funded out of those funds, including four of the sheriff vehicles. So that leaves six vehicles that would need funding for the sheriff in next year's budget. All right, I'm showing this vacancy rate for a few selected county departments, showing this sort of as a state of our organization. But this was also a spending reduction and a cost saving strategy that we implemented. And that was to budget less than 100% of the unfilled positions based on the historical vacancy trends that we've seen. And I did that for the detention center, for DSS and health. So a small portion, not even half, a small portion of those, we've pulled back the funding 
Should we enter into a hiring boom, we would come back to the board during mid-year to get additional funding for those positions. Commissioner Thompson, you had asked at the last meeting for an update on DSS, so I wanted to be sure to highlight for you what their vacancy rates were looking like. We are seeing some improvement uh, for the most part, ever so slightly, but still tr struggling with high turnover. I think our organization as a whole is somewhere around 19%. Can you say that again? The organization as a whole is around a 19% um, vacancy rate, turnover rate, turnover, excuse me. All right, talk about the use of fund balance in next year's budget. The unassigned fund balance that I'm proposing to balance the budget is 5.3 million, which is up about 105,000 from what you currently have um, as a placeholder in your budget uh, in current year. The designated fund balance is 1.4 million, which is a slight reduction. And then this is a, a graph just showing how our fund balance has continued to grow and a reminder that the policy that the board has adopted uh, sets a 20% limit. Uh, anything over th that then is supposed to um, roll into capital reserve. So with the audited statements we received, we're at about 22% right now with fund balance. So here's our first slide to talk about how we're wanting to support the county workforce. I'll start by looking at the chart that you see here for the starting salary for paramedics. This gives you some idea of the challenges that we're facing with recruitment and retention, and it feels like the pay of our neighbors continue to ratchet up nearly monthly. So Alamance is, is a little bit behind there on that list, and we are seeing a lot of turnover to the to the department I'm sorry to the counties that are paying slightly higher rates um, some of our neighbors I'm proposing next year an additional 1% merit we currently have a pay for performance program with county employees and they're eligible to receive either a 2% increase or a 1% increase based on their performance so we'd like to add an additional 1% that would cost $336,000 and we would also propose that that would be funded through a reduction to the employee insurance fund based on positions that are currently vacant but that we have budgeted for the insurance of those positions. So it's not actually a, a cost to your general fund. We're able to pull this uh, other fund um, to support that increase. And what that will do for employees, aside from increased morale, is it, that it helps address one issue of compensation, which is compression, where employees are gathered at the hiring rate of their pay grade, and new employees are coming on at that same rate. We don't have a way to advance them through the pay grade very quickly, so this additional percentage we're hoping would help uh, move them along as they stay with us as a recruitment tool. And finally, I'm proposing the implementation of a compensation study. You'll <coughs> recall that you funded a compensation study in your current year budget. And in the past, as I've heard, as I've met with departments, uh, compensation studies have been brought to the board, but the cost to implement them has just been so staggering that we haven't been able to move forward. So I'd like to propose um, taking one small bite of this really huge beast that is compensation and divide the organization into thirds. So we would implement this over three years, targeting the uh, high turnover, high vacancy, difficult to fill positions in phase one. And I'm setting aside uh, $667,000 that would become effective January 1 to address some of the market study. Again, one piece of compensation the market piece to make sure that our salaries are competitive with those that we're benchmarking against. So that is included in the recommended budget as well. This is the um, current uh, 
uh, consumer price index that we saw for April for the Southeast region, it's at 5.5%. And so we would also like to recommend uh, a 5% cost of living adjustment for county employees. And I did update this, I just got the new April rate. So the amount that we had talked about for March was 5.3, it's now gone up to 5.5, but uh, the proposal has remained the same at 5%. This would apply uh, on July 1, to both full-time and part-time county employees. Here are your volunteer fire department's proposed tax rates as well as the revenue neutral rate. We are also required to publish the revenue neutral rate for them as well. I've got six on this slide and I'm gonna advance to the next one where there's the remaining six. <laughs> All right, so the largest priority that we have in our expenditures is for um, our educational partners. For Alamance Burlington School System, the total recommended both current expense and capital is $51,259,221. Your current expense is, um, it was requested at 50.8, and the recommended budget is increasing their current year funding uh, by a little over a million or 2.45%. The capital, um, I, I have kept that the same, that's the 3.3 that you see, um, that was what they requested and we're recommending, of course, full funding of that. Also wanted to note the additional million dollars that was approved to enhance athletic field renovations um, for properties that are owned by the schools but will be maintained by the county. And then finally, I wanted to clarify on the capital funding model. There is not a proposal in this budget to change any of the funding for their capital uh, funding model. I am suggesting that the um, value of a penny be reflected. So, so we need to update that. It was previously taking about 5.64 cents. With the reevaluation, now it only takes 3.71 cents to generate the exact same amount of money that they were receiving, 9,334,729. So again, the amount is not changing, the value of that is not changing. The number of pennies that it takes, it needs to be updated to reflect your new uh, revaluation numbers. And then this chart tries to capture all the different components of funding that the school system receives from the county for a total of $71.7 .7 million. Here's just a quick trend showing both current expense and capital numbers um, continue to grow um, an upward trajectory for the recommended budget. Uh, also for Alamance Community College, our other educational partner, the total recommended current expense and capital for them is 4.5 million. The current expense, they requested a significant increase, almost 38%. The recommended budget, again like ABSS, is recommended at an increase of 2.45%. <coughs> we fully funded the capital request. You'll recall that that's what counties are statutorily required to fund. And their capital funding model is also being updated with the new value of a penny. So where it previously took 1.4 cents uh, to fund their model, it's now 0.92 cents to fund the plan at the same amount of 2,317,131. And there is their chart to take into account the full scope of funding that Elements Community College receives from the county. Here is their chart that shows you an upward trajectory since 20, fiscal year 21 of uh, funding. This is both current expense and capital for ACC. So your next steps in this process, um, we are setting aside right now two proposed work sessions with the board. They'll be held in this meeting room. Um, we are available to answer questions. Six. Am I what? I'm sorry, the first is May 23rd at 2 p.m. and the second is June 6th at 2 p.m.? Yeah, it said fifth year, I was thinking we'd said the sixth. Oh, I have this, 
The public hearing is June 5th. That's a Monday at 6.30. So you are, requ yeah, you're required to hold a public hearing uh, on June 5th. We're uh, proposing a new location. This is normally a morning meeting that would be changed to 6.30 p.m. to accommodate the public. And then we have two work sessions. One is prior, <coughs> excuse me, prior to the budget public hearing, and one is after, so that you have the opportunity to make any adjustments to the proposed budget based on feedback that you hear. And finally, copies of the recommended budget will be available online for residents who would like more information about um, what is being proposed for funding. I do want to take some a, a brief moment to thank the team that has worked through this budget uh, process with us. Our department directors provided just very thoughtful analysis and very conservative spending requests, helping our job quite a bit. Uh, my management team worked alongside me with patience as I navigated my first budget here in the absence of having a budget director. We're also down to one budget analyst, Ms. Jessica Moody, and she has really uh, dove in there with us. This was her first budget, and we appreciate all of her work on the document. And finally, our finance director, Ms. Susan Evans. I brought her in near the end of the process, and she provided life support to all of us. Her leadership through this budget process has really been invaluable, so we thank you for that. Commissioners, you have important work ahead of you as we navigate from a recommended budget to an adopted budget. I look forward to working with all five of you to make sure that this budget reflects the priorities of the five commissioners. Thank you for the honor of serving as your county manager. Thank you. Let me clarify a couple of the new location for this public hearing is, yes. is where? We are proposing the public hearing to be held on uh, at 6:30 on June 5th in the historic courthouse, so that we can accommodate more members of the public than this room would allow. And we've had that in that location previously, right? So. And IT would still be available uh, to assist with the needs over there. So that's why we're. And let me clarify one other item, please. Um, we actually have the public. Um, hearing on the 5th that's right county commissioners meeting um oh, excuse me work session is on the 6th um it is we tricky. could technically take a vote on the budget um at our june 5th meeting which would then delete the uh, work session on june the 6th and the actual vote on the budget on the uh, 15th. 15th. That's I right. I just want the public to be aware that we likely will t take the actual vote on the budget on the 15th, but we could take it on the 5th. So this could be amended slightly. Sure. We have two work sessions scheduled as placeholders. It's hard to guess how many you'll need depending on what sort of adjustments you'd like to make or what budgets you might want to dive a little deeper into and get further information. So you're right, Chairman. It is possible that we may only need one work session. We're not sure. We went ahead and wanted to announce two um, as a requirement of, of open meetings, but we may not need it. Other it, clarifications? It's also possible we may not need either work session. Like those aren't those aren't scheduled meetings yet, are they? With the announcement of, of this, your first meeting to go through the budget would be May 23rd, unless you... Unless we decide not to have it. Correct. Unless we decide we don't need a work session. Correct. <laughs> Cor you are required to have a public hearing, not required to have work sessions. Correct. Mr. Turner, any other questions? No, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Carter. A lot of work. <laughs> Ms. Thompson. I bet we have both work sessions. It's like a whole list of things. And I don't want a bunch of people coming to the old courthouse and us thinking after we hear totally different requests and stuff that we just vote and ignore them. I, it's possible to do it all, but I just hope we'll 
meet as much as we need to to really fine tooth this to make sure it's fair for everybody especially the people who pay for it all of it sure and let me just say if there are particular uh, departments that you'd like to hear from or uh, specific information you would like staff to come prepared to share with you please let me know and we will make sure to accommodate an agenda that reflects uh, the work that the board would like to focus on at those work sessions and that typically would be done at the work sessions we yeah. invite people yeah. mr yeah. lashley well um just thank you for your hard work uh, i can only imagine how many hours you folks have put in this uh, it's very extensive um i like the way you've laid it out a as a blueprint for us to go by Good. and i think uh, that's going to help out the process mm -hmm. uh, i truly do believe like miss thompson that the uh, the work sessions i know the first one is going to be extremely important and i think the second one could be even more important because that's when we're going to hear from the people like miss thompson said pay the yep. bills here so um i'm, I'm more Sounds than willing to even do it as, as more because uh, I yep. would like the whole community to understand that this is going to be a budget like none of us have ever done before mm -hmm. in the sense that the reevaluation is a part of it yeah. and at the end of the day using that language but at the end of the day it's we need to make sure that we show up at these commissioners uh, meeting on the uh, work sessions with a sharpened pencil that has a good eraser and if there is a need to schedule additional work sessions, we can certainly do that. Sure. But thank you for all your work. We really do appreciate it. You're very welcome. And if I'm not mistaken, the work sessions are open to the public as well. Absolutely, yes. It is a, but not a, the Henry Vines. <laughs> not, not, not Henry Vines. <laughs> I'll save you a seat, Mr. Vines. <laughs> Let me clarify, that. The work sessions are work sessions, and if we invite you in to make a presentation, you will be heard from, but it's not a general public right. situation there's we will not be taking people out correct of right no public comment at the work sessions now, but right. on the other hand we have the public hearing uh, and that's open to anybody and that's i right. assume are we even going to have a sign up for that or how do you i, I would assume we would have a sign up and i'll right. work with the clerk's office so typically you do in favor of and in opposition to but we'll be happy to accommodate however you'd like it to so you will be able to sign up both online and at the meeting is that correct that's our standard practice so i believe that would still be in place for this i'm, I'm talking to tv land now yes <laughs> i'm looking <laughs> tammy who's filling in for tori tonight <laughs> get that Ford, any other questions or comments quickly mr chairman june 5th is that's our regularly it's your regular meeting, meeting. We're moving it to the evening that's correct. Do we anticipate there would be other business to conduct at that meeting as well? It would be a regular meeting okay. of the commissioner, so there's likely to be other items that would need attention, but we will try to keep keep it short. And then the, the next Monday that we normally meet would be the 19th, not the 15th. Uh, thank you for clarifying right. that. I don't have my calendar in front of me. 19th is correct. Thank you. Also at 6.30. All right. I would invite the general public to talk to the commissioners. You know, we try to be available. Uh, we'd like to hear your input, um, but not the same put over input over and over and over again. Uh, if we just need to hear from you, but not don't bombard our email. <laughs> Any other comments? Thank you. And we thank you. Okay. I can be a real wise guy and say, okay, let's now vote on the budget, but I won't do that. <laughs> okay, county, uh, county attorney's report. Nothing further for me tonight. Thank you, boys. Best speech all night. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for speaking up. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, County Manager's Board. Nothing further. So. Uh, the second best. <laughs> okay, Commissioners, it's your time. Ms. Thompson? Oh. Just um, last Tuesday, we had the Operation North State Wounded Warrior Fishing Festival. 
Oh my gosh, at Lake McIntosh, I cannot thank Kyle and Brian and um, Michael, Mike, for from the city of Burlington for all what they did. We had a couple folks from the Veterans Service Office because they still have a big office to run. And, um, and then just Terry Snyder, who's over this, and just all of the amazing veterans that I met are, are quite, we had every problem solved in this world. And so, and, but it was just absolutely such a gift to me. And um, look forward to doing this next year. We had about um, 50 total. Um, fishermen are called anglers when you're really good. So I've learned some terms. And um, also, um, I went to Salemburg this week. Um, last week, a friend of mine became a detective and I went down there and man, that place is isolated and there are no distractions. <laughs> So, um, but it's a long way down there. And I was just so impressed with the extreme integrity that I was around with law enforcement. It was just absolutely awesome. And I had mentioned um, that Sunday, I just wanted to give a big shout out to Burlington PD. I spoke with Brian Long about, we had an emergency um, homeless person was underneath our breezeway at church, sitting, had slept on our bench. Thank goodness she was with us. Um, and she was um, in our services, both services. We had some food for her and um, after, after talking with her and speaking with her, I knew that um, she had a lot of stuff going on. So I called um, 911, told them it wasn't emergency like violence or anything like that. And two really excellent, fine police officers from Burlington PD came and spoke with her after I had and was willing to take her to allied churches and do the whole thing. But um, um, as long as she wasn't a threat to herself or to any of us, you can't make anybody do anything. So we got her a room to stay in last night and hopefully something else has happened today. But I, I just was talking to the police officer and I said, you know, when there's a, when you're in the jail and you get an assessment, they're working at diversion. And then if there's a, a terrible hostage situation or a domestic violence situation and law enforcement has to go out, there's diversion for that. But this is a real population that kind of is in the gray area. Um, she's been on the streets for three years and um, just was totally confused about some things and it was absolutely heartbreaking and she's a female and she had a grocery cart with all her life's belongings with her and and that's so common we see that all the time and I just hope that we'll realize that there's um there's a group of folks that fall in between all this and they're struggling and she is not safe to be on the street not no nobody is and um it's just it's a real difficult world but I just could not think um Burlington PD enough because it is very obvious they've been through CID training like our sheriff's department, like Mebbin, however everybody has. Our law enforcement through the county has really, really done absolutely everything and more dealing with mental health and because um, we got a lot of it. You watch the news and people are breaking, our teenagers are breaking and it's just a, uh, we are just under the fire. I'm going to give the devil full credit. But I just wanted to give a shout out to Burlington PD because um, they, he asked every question right and um, and I was just so thankful for them to come. And we have a sheriff's deputy that is at our church now because we've done um, security and everything. And so, you know, nowadays you got to think about stuff like that. You just never know what's going to walk into your school or your church or anything else. So I encourage all churches to look at that and be smart with their congregations. Um, we got great law enforcement in this county. They're well trained physically and, and for mental illness and just, and just to be great people in the community for everybody to look up to. And I'm so thankful to be in Alamance County and have the law enforcement we do because I see on the news and I'm thinking, what have you done to your law enforcement? And you're seeing the results of your crime. And it's just so, it's outrageous. It's just outrageous. And I'd like to just um, commend whoever <laughs> had the nerve to take 20 veterans out of a hotel mm -hmm. in New York City and bump them for people that are not citizens in this country yet and they have to, I don't know where they are, but when you start messing with the military, the ones that go and serve for your freedom and mine, and you put other people in their place, how dare this administration, I, I don't care who's listening to me, but somebody better because this is becoming over and over and over the disrespect for our law enforcement and our soldiers everywhere they are and I, I see what I was being put into the military and it's pathetic it is absolutely pathetic but you take a bunch of homeless soldiers that no matter what they've gone through with what they've seen in deployment or war and they're trying to get their lives back and they get bumped out for people who have not served this country so there 
Call me, Washington. I'll let you know how I really feel. But it's, it's just, I've never seen anything like my country, what they're doing to our military, to our kids, to, to everybody, our teachers. We are just on a hot mess trail. And, huh, God, protect Alamance County. We got to really keep our mess together because I don't want to be like what I'm watching on TV. We are not going to, we're not going to be the next Chicago or the next Seattle or anywhere else. And as long as we got the right people in leadership that really give a flip, we're going to be okay. But it's not the case everywhere else. But I saw that this morning. I thought, homeless soldiers because of whatever they've been through. <clears throat> It's just, it just sucks. It's just, it's ridiculous. So, done. There's a drone over my house right now, and I hope it is. They can call me anytime, anytime. Mr. Lashley. Uh, the only thing I would like to add is what Ms. Thompson was saying. You know, they're doing that by design. Yeah. It's all by design. And I have friends that live in New York City, and they just can't believe what's going on. And um, luckily, they're going to... Move south, but I have no comments. Mr. Carter. Nothing for me, thank you. Mr. Carter. Well, I can kind of add a ditto to what Pam and Bill yeah. said. Uh, the Marine in New York City who's been charged with manslaughter for defending the rest of the people on that train. All by design. Travesty. Travesty. My closing remarks are going to be what Mr. Lashley just said under his breath. It's all planned. Mm -hmm. It's all by design. Uh, That's why this stuff is happening. It doesn't happen by circumstance or yeah. by chance. We just need to keep Alamance County, Alamance County. Yep. See you on June the 5th. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Say aye, aye and leave. <laughs>Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgov.tv tvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.